Hey, Harry, congratulations on Olympia, the documentary. Thank you so much. I really appreciate, you know, inviting me and uh, talking about the film. This is going to be fun. Terrific, terrific. Yeah, I, I checked it out. I'm, I'm always fascinated with uh, Olympia Dukakis. Just, uh, it's just sort of like she has like this uh, gracefulness uh, through her career, um, per se. And, and that, that's, that's why I was actually interested in her documentary, especially to learn more about her because, uh, because she seems to be, I don't know, sort of like in public, but yet private in, in her own way. Yeah, and I think that was, you know, one of the reasons that I was interested um, in doing this documentary was when I met her, I only knew of her film work. I didn't even know that much about the theater or all the other, you know, sides to her personality and her character. And so I, after getting to know her, I was like, oh my God, I think the, I think the world would be interested in getting to know this incredible you know, human being beyond being like one of the best character actresses I think that we've ha that we have, um, but as a person as well. So, what what actually sparked you to to do to do the documentary? I mean, did you watch a movie and said, you know, this is an interesting subject, or did you read a book, or what 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 actually just like, you know, put up that light bulb saying, you know what, I want to do a documentary on Olympia. Um, well, it was. <sighs> It was kind of two, you know, two things. One was that I, um, I never wanted to do a documentary. I, in film school, I didn't take any documentary classes. I spent three years writing my first script, which was going to take place in Cyprus. I submitted my script to the Ministry of Culture there, and it, that was 2011. The, um, the financial collapse happened, so there was no more funding for anything. So I was left. Um, feeling suff suffocated artistically. Like I was like, what am I gonna do with my life now? And um, on a parallel universe, I went to Tribeca Film Festival and I was watching the Carol Channing documentary and uh, the film finished and I was like, oh my God, this, you know, this, is, this was so wonderful. I was crying, I was laughing. And I turned to my husband at the end and I was like, you know, someone needs to do a documentary about Olympia. Like, and he just said, well, why don't you do it? You're a filmmaker. And my initial reaction was like, oh, but I don't know how to do this, you know? And, uh, but I, in a way I, I had nothing else to do. And I was like, oh my God, the more I thought about it, it was like, I could actually take a camera and, and the sound and just follow her. And I don't need to, you know, raise a lot of money. And uh, so as, as I processed it in my, in my head, uh, I started getting excited and um, that's when I pitched it to her and she said no there's no way I want to do this <laughs> there's no way you she wanted it but, but you ended up doing it so how, what, what 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 convinced her um you know it's a it's a great story because I uh, I was I was going to her apartment once a week for three months and every week I would find a a different reason why she should do it you know you know the the word mansplaining i was mansplaining you know why she should be <laughs> she should do this film um it's going to be your legacy film people you know you'll be on the spotlight again you're you know blah 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 and and every time she was like i'm not i don't want to do this harry i'm not interested in a legacy film i'm not interested in being in the spotlight you know this is i don't want to do it so three months into it I realized that it wasn't happening. And so I went there just, you know, to say, I, I give up, I'm, I, I surrender. Um, and I said, you know, Olympia, really like the only reason I, I wanted to do this was if I do a documentary about you, it means that I would spend a lot more time with you. And that's all I want. And she turned around and she just said, okay, I can do it for this reason. And it was as easy as that. I mean, easy. Like, it, it, it was basically her, you know, she smells bullshit from miles, up, you know, away. And she's all about, you know, connecting with people. She's all about being real, you know. And I think that the moment that I took my guard down and I expressed to her why I wanted to make this film, then she was, 
she was able to connect with me and you know and 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 I agreed to it and that's how it started <laughs> <laughs> so where did you want to start with her um her, in 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 her story you just uh took out the camera but I mean where you know you, because you, you have to have a narrative in mind when when you uh, started this project <laughs> I think I think if you're a serious filmmaker <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have a narrative, but um, I had no idea what I was doing. No idea. Um, all I, I had never done a documentary before. All I knew was just trust your instinct and, and just film her. There was no story. So I went to her personal assistant and we sat down and we looked at her calendar. She was booked for two years. So it was easy for me to you know, and it was, it just happened that her next gig was uh, the San Francisco Pride, which got me really excited, you know, as a, as a game on, I was like, oh my God, we're going to be in the parade. So um, we, yeah, we, we flew to San Francisco and then I just kept following her for about two years. And I thought, okay, I think I have enough footage and now I need to like start raising money and get into editing. And um you know, in the third year, the star happened. She got the Hollywood star and the Greece trip happened. So the third year kind of filled up with must hubs that I felt like I had to capture. And so we filmed for three years and it was great because American Express paid for it. You know, I didn't have to worry about asking people for money. My credit card just, you know, <laughs> took me places. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the honeymoon ended after three years where <laughs> I had to start raising money. Yeah. Well, so she, she's such a humble person her, herself. Um, how, what was it like trying to film like, you know, those intimate moments, those personal moments with her? You know, um, Olympia, Olympia is very open, um, depending on her mood. You know, she wrote a, a, an autobiography autobiography um, and it's called ask me again tomorrow and so if I would try to approach a subject if she wasn't in the mood I could tell right away that it was everything was really mechanic so I just let it you know I dropped it and then I would find another moment that I felt was more appropriate and then she would just open up and it's funny because the locations of where we were and what was happening in her personal life at that specific location is so crystal clear as to what we got from each trip. You know, like Los Angeles, she had just gotten into an accident. Uh, three, you know, she almost got killed three days before she flew to LA. She had the black eye, the broken hand. Um, and she, they put her in an apartment building where she had to go to the third floor, but the elevator wasn't working. So she was going up and down, up and down, you know, with a broken hand. So, there was a lot of frustration and, you know, emotional angst. And um, that's when we talked about regrets and, you know, aging and death. And, you know, so it was all those subjects came from LA and then other locations had other, you know, um, themes. Absolutely. Now for, for, for yourself, there is so much traveling with this, with this documentary alone, um, how was that overall experience? I mean, why were you so ambitious? Most documentaries would not uh, do this much travel. She, she was always traveling. So it was like, am I either going to do this or not? So, you know, she, she, it's hard to imagine an 80 year old woman or an 83 year old woman not being home. You know, she wasn't home. She would come home, you know, for a couple of days and then off to the next project. So there was not really a choice for me not to not to travel. And um, what was nice was that I got to be, you know, closer to her because she was also alone there. So in a way, the camera and the sound, because I was doing the sound and my with my cameraman, we were company almost you know that uh, you know the cable would break down and my cameraman would fix it mm -hmm. so um yeah it was um, i had no choice in the matter that that was her lifestyle so what was she like when the camera's off the same way as the camera is on 
there is no there there are no two olympias there's not an olympia for certain amount group of people and another olympia for for others it's it's one person one personality so what you see in the film is really who she is wow excellent now obtaining like you know her old photos and um you know video footage was that hard to uh, gather for yourself the the photos no because she has an amazing archival you know albums and stuff so i went through her whole house um what was extremely difficult was um footage of her theater she had a theater company for 20 years and there is no footage surviving other than the footage that i found and put in the film from that was recorded from a, a television station um, I spoke to the board of directors. I spoke to the public li library in Montclair, you know, because somebody said, oh, I think we donated the videos to the, to the library. I, I, I searched and searched and searched and I couldn't find anything. Um, the archival footage of her, it was like two years into it, her brother called me and said, hey, Harry, listen, I, I just remembered, I have this like super eight um, reels that we filmed back in the day. Like, is that something that you would be interested in? And I was like, yes, I swear to you, I booked a flight, I flew, I got the reels, took them to the development, you know, where they digitized them, got them back, you know, I don't know how many days later. And we started watching them and we we're like, oh my God, oh my God, this is amazing. She had never offered anything. And not because she didn't want this to succeed, but she was, she's always busy with her work. And all she can think about is my lines, my next project, da, da, da. you know, she's, she's, a, she's a workaholic. And uh, so her brother played a big part. I mean, and, and as you saw in the film, the archival footage, I think is, it's stunning, you know, ha having her so young and, um, you know, showing the relationship between her husband and her, and her mother. It, it almost sounds like her family is more supportive of the documentary and more interested than she is. <laughs> Apollo, 100% more. <laughs> she was, yeah, definitely, yeah. So, so I'm curious, has, has Olympia seen this documentary already and what was her reaction to it? She did. She, we, we arranged a screening at her apartment. She invited 12 of her girlfriends. And so there was like 13 women, you know, all sitting down. Now, you have to understand that when we screened it, when we were done, she was probably 87 years old at this point. And she started smoking again. And so there was this like back, you know, th this discussion of, okay, what do we do if she has to go to the bathroom? Because she, you know, she goes to the bathroom a lot, you know? And uh, like, do we stop? Do we pause the film and then every it ruins the the flow or do we just keep playing and then she misses parts you know parts of the film and we're like no no we gotta pause we gotta pause um so we sit down we start and the film ends she doesn't have a cigarette she doesn't go to the restroom and people you know start clapping people are talking to me and all of a sudden i hear um harry where's harry and i'm like i'm here i'm here i'm here and she uh, says, she comes to me and she goes, Harry, this is so beautiful. She said, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. She said, this film was about me and even I wanted to know what was, what was gonna happen. And uh, yeah, that was like, because I can't tell you how much stress I was sitting, I had when I was sitting there watching her watch, because you also have to remember she doesn't like watching her films. She doesn't like watching herself in any of her films. And this is a documentary that's like no makeup, no, like you, you saw how she is, she's just natural. Um, so yeah, I exhaled <laughs> the moment. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's amazing. And, and, and you still have the friendship with her uh, today after all these years? Absolutely. I'm actually going to see her next week for the first time in a year because of the pandemic. She's, she got vaccinated. Um, but, you know, we talk on the phone. Um, yeah, she's... I don't know what my life would have been like 
without having done this project, without having her in my life. Like it, she, I, I joke, but it's true. It, it was all, it's almost like I, I have a PhD now on life. You know, she was such an inspiration on, you know, on how inquisitive she is, how smart she is, how um, respect, like how, how much she respects people and, uh, and, and, and how vulnerable she allows herself to be because she could have had like, you know, her queen's throne where she could say, I want to do this, I want to do that, you know, every project she goes into, there's like a vulnerability, like a wanting to learn more. Um, but above all, her relationship, seeing her relationship with her husband, um, it was like, this is what I want. This is how I want to be in my relationship. It was, uh, it was truly inspiring. Now the Greece trip, that was a, uh how can you say that was a, actually a very good intimate moment in, in your documentary. Um, that you must've been felt fortunate that actually landed in the timeline. <laughs> well, it, it didn't land. It, it like I said, it was, I was supposed to film for two years and this was at the end of the third year that kind of like it was announced, like, you know, we're going to go to Greece. And I was like, Oh, Oh, can we, you know, <laughs> can we come? Um, and you know, the, the, yes, it was the, one of the best things, I think one of the best experience of my life, like being there and witnessing her and her family experience all this stuff. Um, it was, it was humbling to say the, you know, the least. It's, it seems, it seems like that trip to totally changed, changed her or at least her, her perspective. Um, because it, it changed the tone of uh, how, how she viewed life suddenly. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it was a very powerful, and she still talks about those four women. You know, like, they're, they're, I, I hear her talk to people about it all the, you know, all the time. That experience with the four women and the turtle, um, really, uh, <laughs> for anyone who hasn't seen the film, <laughs> like, <laughs> turtle, <laughs> what turtle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was like going, gosh, that, 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 that's, that must have been um, one long day just to watch, watch that turtle. <laughs> <laughs> that turtle, that turtle did so much for this film, though. You have like, um, I mean, do you have time for a little backstory? Yeah, go for it. Um, we went to the turtle. We were supposed to go with the whole family. The whole family disappeared that day. So it was just Olympia. We go there, that thing happens and it's magical. Um, fast forward a year later, we're trying to raise money. And we find out that there's this trust, this, this Greek American woman who left, died of cancer and left all her millions to these three guys to disperse the arts and certain other things that she was interested in but you can apply, you have to be invited. So we found out that they had given money to a magnet school in Brooklyn and they built a theater with that money. So we went to the opening, we crashed the opening and um, we meet the one guy who was there from the, you know, from the trio. And, um, you know, I so said, this is, you know, my, my producer said, this is Harry Mabarikalis, he's, he's, you know, directing a film on Olympia Dukakis and he says, oh, he said, I, I, I've met Olympia, you know, a couple of years ago. And I said, oh, where did you meet her? And he said, oh my God, it was the weirdest place. He said, we were at this beach and they were releasing this turtle. And, uh, and I was like, what? Wait, wait. I said, oh my God. I said, I remember you, we filmed that. I, I said, I have you on video. So his, his wife comes in, we start talking. And then, you know, it's this connection of being at the turtle because everybody was mesmerized with the turtle. Um, and she said, to me, why don't you send us an application for your film? And I said, okay, so I go home. I find the footage of him and Olympia talking because they were like, they were doing some banter about the turtle. Oh, look at her. She's like, a, you know, she, she, she likes attention. That's why she's stopping. You know, they were just like, like laughing. And I, and I created the video. I sent the application with the video. And two weeks later, we received $53,000. Oh, 
So that turtle, <laughs> you know, that turtle did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, you know, I heard of, you know, seven degrees of separation. I didn't realize a turtle was the one that actually uh, <laughs> linked you to the funding of uh, your documentary. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Blessed. And, you know, a lesson. You never know who you're talking to, you know? You know, like we had no idea that that gentleman that, you know, Olympia was chatting with was responsible for millions of dollars that he wanted to give out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sounds like you had a great experience on this documentary. Do you want to do documentaries again or you want to go back to feature films? Well, I want to do a lot of like, you know, I do music videos um, and um, I just I'm just writing my second feature um and i've already finished shooting my second documentary so i don't want to be i don't want to just do documentaries but i don't want to stop doing documentaries I, I i fell in love with the genre and um i think that's going to be something i'll be doing for the rest of my life wow excellent now when people view when audiences have a chance to view olympia which is now available today what is the one most important take that you hope that they walk away with? How to live life. I think, you know, the, 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 the whole, my whole, my goal in making this film was to, you know, I didn't want to do a factual film and I didn't want to do like a, a glossy, you know, look at this Academy Award winning star you know and she did this and she did that um i think it, i was reflecting on on my own journey and how difficult it is to be an artist and her journey was even worse than my journey and so i wanted to show the struggle of what you have to go through in order to achieve, to achieve you know something and um i think what i want people to know is that you just have to keep going. You just have to keep, you know, going in your path. It's going to be hard as hell, but it's the only way forward. You know, it, there's no easy road to, you know, anything. Terrific. That's, that's a great, that's a great perspective. Well, let me uh, leave with one more thought um, with you, Harry, because obviously, you know, in the past 12, 13 months, the world has gone crazy. I don't know how often you had a chance to go back to Cyprus now these days, but how are you staying sane and creative during all this time? Well, you know, it, the, the thing with is that we were supposed to have our theatrical release on March, 2020. So on Jan, end of January, beginning of February, we realized that it wasn't happening and we pushed it to July because we thought that COVID was gonna come and go um, really fast and that didn't happen. So there was a lot of hardship in, in disappointment because you, you, know, you wanted to be in theaters and you wanted people to sit and watch your film. And, but because we had to reinvent the wheel on distribution and how to get this film out, I was swamped. This last year, I've been swamped with work on Olympia. So that was the blessing, you know, which is always like a double-edged double, double -edged sword that, you know, you, have, you know, things changed, not good, but thank God I have this film that's keeping me, you know, sane. So that's how I did it. Well, I think you made a wonderful movie. It, it, it was beautifully shot. It was a beautiful narrative. And um, anybody who's a fan of Olympia Dukakis will certainly need to check this out. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, all the information is on our website, um, olympiathefilm.com. So if anyone is interested in, oh, and also behind the scenes stuff, we have a lot of footage of scenes that didn't make the film on our social media and the website. So people can check those out and uh, Excellent. Well, hey, Harry, hey, thank you very much uh, for speaking with us. I really do appreciate uh, you making this film, and I can't wait to uh, check out your new next project whenever that is completed. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it.
Hey, not a problem. Hey, thank, thank you very much. Next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.